Hello. Wow. I did not think y'all was going to show up this morning. You know, LA people, y'all like to hike in the morning and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much for coming to see me. Um, today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to unlock level two as a creative. Just show of hands. How many people actually know everybody in here is creative. Raise your hand if you consider yourself a creative. That's what I like to see. OK, so we about to hop right into it. So who am I? My name is Donye Taylor. I'm a creative philosopher. Basically what that means is I analyze creativity and the science behind it, and I do that in a way to regurgitate it to you all so you all can be better creatives. I'm also a creative consultant, and brands and public figures hire me to create marketing campaigns to boost revenue, generate audience, and a bunch of other things. I'm also the CEO and founder of a new company that I'm launching in a couple of months called Nuclei. I put a sh emoji because you guys are the only people that I've told that to, so you guys get a really good surprise today. I'm also a public speaker. I mean, I'm publicly speaking to you guys right now, duh. And I'm a digital creator. So I want to play a game first. If any of these statements apply to you, I want you to raise your hand. So the first one is, if you know you're different, but you're not sure how to communicate it online, raise your hand. OK. If you're ready to elevate the way that you execute your creativity, raise your hand. OK, everybody. Raise your hand if you also have a passion, but you don't know how to take that passion and put it into your personal brand. OK. So if you raise your hand, that means that you are in the right place. So with my presentation and what I'm going to be teaching you guys today is how to differentiate yourself from others within your industry, how to elevate the way that you show up online, and how to integrate your passions into your personal brand. So what is level two? I started saying level two about a year ago to my friends. It was so much that I was seeing online that I just thought was like really elevated. I remember when I seen that Doja video where she had that red crystal studded thing, that I thought was level two. It's so many different creatives out here that are pushing the needle, but I don't think that they're getting the recognition that they deserve. And I didn't think that it had a name, so I came up with level two. Level two is a theory based on the belief that in order to shift the paradigm and create new trends, create new perspectives, your mind has to operate at a certain frequency. Level two is also a lifestyle that's directly correlated to your way of thinking. I always, always, always preach the importance of mindset when it comes to cre creativity. That's the most important thing that I believe when it comes to creativity. And it's also an adjective that I use to describe anything that's really unique or outside the box. So how do you unlock level two? It's five steps, and I'm going to go through each of these five steps with you all today so that you can learn how to do it. The first step, I think, is the most important, important step. A lot of people start their creative process with mood boarding. I don't like that because I feel like it taints the way that you approach your creativity. You're taking in a lot of different inspiration from outside forces, but I believe that your inspiration should start with inside. So to illustrate that, I'm going to bring up Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Everybody knows who these people are. They both have a company that is geared towards computers and things like that. But what separates them? So Bill Gates, he was inspired and passionate about technology, software, programming, and philanthropy, whereas Steve Jobs was really inspired and passionate by design, music, simplicity, and art. The reason why this is so important is because those two things, even though they practically did the same exact thing, their passion and what they were inspired by is the main difference between Microsoft and Apple. So Bill Gates focused a lot on educating people about software, technology, things like that, versus Steve Jobs. He wanted people to feel like anybody could be a part of technology, made technology really, really simple and easy to digest. So I want to just use that to set the stage so that you guys can see just how important it is for you to, for you to be passionate about something that it is that you care about. I'm going to use myself as a case study for the rest of this presentation. Show of hands, how many people in here follow me on Instagram? Oh, OK. OK, so you already know what this is. If you don't follow me on Instagram, this is my first ever digital product that I launched. I launched it in February. 
And I launched this using my creative process of level two. This is an ebook to get creatives to break up with their creative anxiety. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. Okay, so first step, passionate inspiration. There was a time, I would say around January, where a lot of people were asking me to help them with their creative strategy for the new year. Everybody is trying to figure out what their strategy is gonna be on social and things like that. I noticed that there was a common denominator in pretty much all of my clients and people that were talking to me. There were so many people that were scared to post on the internet. How many of you have anxiety when it comes to posting on the internet? A lot. So that really inspired me. I'm also really passionate about motivating people to seek happiness and freedom by expressing themselves creatively. And if social media is a block to do that, then I need to figure out how I can create something in order for people to get through that block. So this is the first step. Second step is education and research. I feel like a lot of people sleep on research, and research I love, well, I'm a nerd, so I just love reading about a bunch of stuff, but I came across this thing called anxious attachment styles, and it's basically the way that people integrate and have relationships with other people. I took that information and I was like, wait a second, I think this could be the theme for my entire ebook. So it's February, anxious attachment styles, relationships. I'm like, oh, I'll just drop this February 14th, a day where everybody's talking about their relationships, but I'm gonna do it with my own spin. This became a really huge foundation for how I marketed my product. The third step is I like to call it enlightenment and illumination which is basically all of the three steps combined to create this light bulb moment for you to figure out what it is that you're going to do and how you're going to combine your passion, your inspiration, and research in order to create this thing. So I took my passion, which is motivating people to find happiness and freedom through creativity, combined it with my inspiration, added it onto my research, and then the light bulb went off. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna just make a digital guide that teaches people how to break up with their creative anxiety. The fourth step is planting and cultivation. I think this step you should stay in the longest because it really sets up the entire infrastructure and how you're gonna carry out the rest of your project. So I look at ideas as seeds. If you do not water that seed, your idea will not grow. You can have a bunch of seeds, but if you don't plant it, if you don't water it, if you don't give it the environment to thrive, it's not gonna grow. So this phase is basically creating an environment for your idea to thrive. So the water is basically where you're gonna think about how you're gonna execute that idea, how it will be done, the rollout, the infrastructure, and more. So for me, the water was me thinking about how I can create a marketing rollout that gets people to, number one, even notice that they have creative anxiety, number one. And number two, how am I going to provide information that lets them know how they can overcome it? The flower on the right, which is going to be the final product, is the ebook or the digital guide that I was going to launch. So strategic execution. How do you want to execute on this idea and how can it be turned up a notch? Everybody is releasing ebooks left and right. We're in the digital age, people are selling information. In fact, a lot of people are selling information for free. They're not even selling it, they're just putting information out there. So I'm like, if I want people to buy what it is that I'm selling, I need to make sure that it's elevated and it's different. So going back to the anxious attachment styles that I mentioned earlier, these are two screenshots from my Instagram. I created my own attachment styles based on the relationships that I think people had with their creativity. So the first one I have here is comparison attachment. I think a lot of people have comparison attachment, which is basically where you're comparing yourself to other people that are within your industry that you may think are better than you just because they have better metrics. I want to point out that I am a creator that does not have a ton of followers. I have about 50,000 right now. It took me a long time to get to that number, but I'm okay with that because I know that my audience is, they care about what it is that I'm talking about. I'd rather have 50,000 people care about what it is that I'm talking about than have 300,000 and only 1% care. 
The other attachment style is perfection attachment. Raise your hand if you don't want to post because you think that your content isn't perfect enough. There's no such thing as perfection. Social media is supposed to be a tool for you to express yourself creatively. You're supposed to show your journey, your process, and everything. There is no such thing as perfection. There is no finish line. So these were, again, these are two screenshots that I took from my Instagram. And this is one of the things that I use to market this. So this is a screenshot of how this post performed. What anxious social media attachment styles do you associate with the most as a creative? And this generated 281 comments. Again, I, I think at this time I had about 45,000 followers. So for this post to generate this amount of engagement was really, really, really shocking to me. And it let me know that all of the work that I had put in from steps one to four really paid off. And I want you guys to pay attention to the comments. So Ben Chanel says, I feel attacked, but I like it. Please let this be the guide to break this vicious cycle. Whatever it is that you're doing as a creator, you need to make sure that your creativity is valuable to somebody on the other end. It can't just look cool. It has to do something. It has to either save somebody time, make somebody feel seen, or add value to somebody's life. So as you're creating, think about how your art can serve one of those three purposes or all three. So strategic execution. I could have easily just created a ebook cover that just had the title, How to Break Up With Your Anxiety, but I didn't want to do that because then that would have been level one, me just doing the bare minimum. I was like, you know what? Since I'm treating this like a rollout, why don't I just make my cover look like an album cover? Because why not? So to the left, this is the cover. To the right, that's some extra content that I used to promote it. But this went nuts on my Instagram. Like, everybody loved this. And I'm just going to break down the actual cover for you. So I've released this on Valentine's Day because the thing was breaking up with your creative anxiety. So I basically wanted to go the opposite route of Valentine's Day. So already, I'm cutting through the noise. Everybody's talking about relationships with their significant other. And I'm like, yo. People got relationships with their creative anxiety, and I'm going to teach y'all how to break up with that. That's why I have the, the, the rose burning. It's supposed to symbolize like love and stuff like that, but breaking up with your creative anxiety. So these numbers, I don't really, I'm not one of them people that like to talk about money on the internet, but I do it in situations like this because I do think that it's important for creators to know that you can actually monetize off of your creativity, and you can use the internet to generate passive income. So I'm going to stay on this slide for a little bit. I want you, so these numbers to the left, this is what I generated in 30 days after launching. Again, at this time, I only had 45,000 followers. So Instagram was the number one traffic source, of course, because I, I promoted a lot on Instagram. But I want you guys to pay attention to direct and external email. What direct and external email means is basically those people either went directly to my website or they went from my newsletter. The reason why external email is so important is because I have set up a community for my audience that exists outside of social media. If you are a creator, you need to have a community that exists outside of social media. If you do not have one, you need to go home today and create one. It could be a text community, it could be a newsletter, it can be a blog, anything where your audience can reach you outside of social media. You do not want to be in a position where Instagram shuts down and you cannot reach your audience. You want to use Instagram social media to leverage your audience to shift them over somewhere else. So I made almost about $4,000 in about 30 days outside of Instagram. Google, I don't know how people found me on Google. Maybe they was Googling my name. I don't know. But in Facebook, Facebook is connected to Instagram. Now, the numbers to the right is what my Instagram post did. So the first one, I want you guys to look at that comment number that says 829. The reason why I was able to get 829 comments is because I used a third-party software called MiniChat. And I want you guys to write down MiniChat, M-A-N-Y, 
C-H-A-T. Now what Minichat is, it's a third party software that you can connect to your Instagram and it basically is your Instagram user for yourself. So what that means is this mini chat software can DM people for you, it can comment back, it can reshare content for you. You can set it up to do whatever it is that you want it to do. So what I did on launch day, I set up a trigger and I said, if you comment a rose, I will DM you the link to purchase my ebook. So what that is doing is I'm capitalizing off all of the hype that is happening in my comments and the posts and I'm converting them into actual sales. The second screenshot I want to focus on is a screenshot where I did the carousel of the attachment styles. That got 1,052 sins and I think that's really, really, really significant because that means that somebody sent it to somebody that probably wasn't already following me. When you guys are promoting your creativity, think about how your creativity and your art can be shareable. If it's not shareable, you're gonna just keep marketing to the same exact audience. So I want you guys to stop thinking about aesthetics just alone and think about how your creativity can be valuable and make people feel seen. So a few takeaways. I want you guys to think about how you can use your passions to guide your inspiration and then connect your ideas to it. Level two is really important, especially for the creative industry, because a lot of people do the same exact thing. What's going to separate you is how you connect your passion to it in order to make a connection with whoever it is that you're marketing to on the opposite side. I love philosophy, I love psychology. There's a lot of creative consultants and there's a lot of people that are telling people, post more online, post this, post this. I didn't wanna go that route. I use psychology and philosophy in order to communicate that. That is what's unique to me and that is why my audience follows me and engages with me because I have that perspective. Use your inspiration and your passions to create a unique perspective on how you communicate your art. Oops, how do I go back? There we go. The second thing is whatever you land on first, always push yourself beyond that, whatever it is. Even this outfit that I got on today, I wasn't going to wear this. I was going to wear something else, but then this morning I was like, you know what? I think I want to do something a little bit more jazzy. I always, always, always push myself past whatever it is the first thing that I'm doing because I feel like the first thing is always the easiest thing. Whatever is easy, that's not level two. You want to be, you want to not just be good, you want to be great. And anything that's worth doing is worth doing great. Also, I want you guys to think about how you can lean into other verticals to amplify how you show up with your creativity. So like I said, I was really inspired by music. I mean, I'm always inspired by music. I love music. But my inspiration with music led me to create my ebook cover that looked like an album cover. So think about how you can lean into other verticals and take things from that and input it into your art to make it really unique. The third thing is I want you guys to build a community that exists outside of social media. Do that, please, please, please. I don't know if you guys noticed, but it seems like Instagram, TikTok, everything is getting so oversaturated. And I really believe the future of the digital world is really small niche communities. People don't want to feel overwhelmed. They want to feel like they can get exactly what they want when they want it. And the way that you can do that is with a niche community. The third thing is use apps like Minichat, Substack, and more to get creative with your marketing. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Hi. Uh, my name is Sabine. I am a graphic designer and illustrator, also a creative strategist. Um, and one of the things that I struggle with is, like, I know why I like the work that I'm doing. So I, I wonder if there's any tools or methods that you use to kind of step outside of yourself and think about why it's adding value to your audience. So mm -hmm. what are the motivations for your audience to engage with your content or your product? Okay, so little known fact about me, I used to be a graphic designer. That was actually my first entryway into the creative world. And I think a lot of graphic designers, when it comes to promoting themselves, y'all are promoting it from a very, hey, look at what I did perspective. It's 
mainly aesthetics and you're looking at it from your graphic design expertise, but your audience, they're not graphic designers. They don't care about what color palette you used or what tool you used to do X, Y, and Z. They care about how that's going to be valuable to them or the story. So what I would do if I was you, I would think about how you can tell more stories with your art instead of just saying, look at this logo I did or look at this flyer I made. Maybe try to break down the inspiration behind that so that your audience can kind of create a connection with you and think like, okay, this girl creates based off of X, Y, and Z. I like her art because it's based on X, Y, and Z and not just I like her art because it looks cool. Everything looks cool, it's the internet. Like you can make stuff on AI now. Now it's about the stories that your art can tell and what it means to you. Anybody have any other questions? I'll do right here. Who got the mic? Oh. I feel like um, as wait, a, what's your name? Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, damn! I feel like, <laughs> I feel like no. My name's uh, my name's Everett Hughes. I'm a junior copywriter. Um, and I, I love copywriters. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Been doing it for a year and some change now. Absolutely love it. But um, I was gonna say, I feel like as a creative, it can be kind of daunting to share sometimes because everything you make is your baby, and you know when something doesn't perform as well as you think it does, it can kind of affect you or stick with you. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know, how do you maintain a healthy relationship with social media? Okay, number one, I stopped looking at social media as a tool to kind of promote numbers and things like that. I now look at social media as a way to help leave my legacy. When I'm no longer here, how are people going to perceive me? What is my work going to look like? And after that, when I'm no longer here, likes not about to matter, comments not about to matter, and even if it don't perform well, maybe the next day, all it takes is one person to share your post, and you can be out of here tomorrow. So you can't focus on the numbers and the metrics in that moment. You got to think about the long game and how you want to be remembered as a copywriter, not how you want to be seen right now. So that's how I maintain a healthy relationship with social media. I look at it as a way to help paint the picture of my legacy. Gotcha. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, any more questions? OK. I'm going gonna go, gonna to go around. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm making you. I'm, you know what? I'm going to do the questions based on where you at. Hold on. So she can make her way. Who got a question in the middle? OK, him in, him in the back right there. Oh, black shirt. Uh, my name is Sean. I'm a brand strategist and a content creator. Um, I had a question about, like, as far as being a multi-hyphenate, right? You have a lot of passions around a couple of different areas, but you don't know, like, where to put your time, your energy, in order to be able to kind of blend these things into one, like your mm -hmm. being. What kind of recommendations do you have, and like, how do you kind of tackle that? Because I know you have a couple of different passions. Mm -hmm. How do you tie all those together and like invest the right amount of time in them? So I call it, I, I name everything. Like I really just think in analogies, it's crazy. But I call this thing the hedgehog. The hedgehog is basically this one thing that you're going to use to get to where you want to go the quickest. And then from there, you could do whatever it is that you want. So for me, graphic design was my hedgehog when I first started because I was able to design stuff really, really quickly, and my graphic design skills put me in the room with a lot of business owners. So from there, I was able to leverage those relationships to help me within my next pivot, which is to move on to marketing and consulting. So think about what passion you have that you can create with the most efficiency that's going to help you get to where you want to go. If you try to do everything all at one time, it can get really confusing, and you can get overwhelmed, and it can take the fun out of creating. So out of all your passion, just try to think about the one that's the easiest for you to create, and that'll have the most value to get, to get you to where you want to go. Thank you, appreciate it. Oh. Uh, beige, is that beige? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna call it beige. She has on a beige, like, onesie. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michael. Um, I work in growth in digital marketing and tech. And I'm wondering how you deal with, one, staying motivated, but also 
as a creative, when you enter some type of block or just needing to come up with something new or mm -hmm. what you're working on feels tired, how do you get through that block? Ooh, okay. It's really hard sometimes because when you're a creative person, all of your value and if you really, really, really want to be a great creative, you're thinking, how can I do something new? It's really hard to do something new if you're around everything that's old. So I try to... I, I really try to like extract myself sometimes, like every couple of months. I try not to go out for a while. Um, I try to just stay by myself. I try to get off the internet because everything that I'm consuming is technically already old. The real inspiration is offline. You just use the internet to show what it is that you're inspired by. So whenever I'm feeling like I have a block, I turn to books, I turn to music videos, anything that really makes me feel fired up. And that's why passion is so important because you can find so much inspiration and passion. And I really think your passions allow you to scale as a creator where you can be in different places at one time without your art being connected to your physical presence. Okay, I think we got two more questions. Time for two more questions. Well, I don't know, Culture Con, let me know if how I'm doing on time. They ain't say nothing, so all right. <laughs> yeah, Red, Red Beret. Thank you. Hi, I'm Moe. Um, I'm a poet, creative director, and published author. I come um, with one question and one gift. My question for you is pertaining to your faith and what role your faith had to play in your journey. Yes, sis, because a lot of people undermine that part. Yes. So I want to know about your faith and then okay. I brought you a love token. Oh, thank you. Okay, not to get real spiritual on y'all, but when I was in Africa this past December, I had a epiphany and I really feel like it was God that was speaking to me. I never had this type of like feeling before ever in my life. I never felt like I heard God speak to me so clearly, but I felt like God was telling me that if I didn't go into the new year using all of the gifts that he gave me, then I was gonna make him disappointed. I didn't want God to question him giving me the gifts that he did. I wanted to really make him proud. I wanted him, I wanted him to know that I was grateful for the gifts that he gave me. So when I came back from Africa, I was like, yo, I gotta step it up. I was a little too comfortable. I had a marketing agency that, had, that was named Forbes 30 Under 30 and I barely promoted my marketing at all. That was all just from word of mouth and me just having good relationships. I was in a very comfortable position. And I also realized that with my consulting agency, I could only help my clients. I could only help the people that I was directly working with. So with this new pivot, I'm helping everybody. I'm trying to help everybody feel like they are creative and give them the tools to do so. So I don't know if that answered your question, but I'm not somebody that go to church every Sunday, but I just talk to God like he my homie, I be, you know, so I hope, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Do we have time for one more? Right here. So basically what she said is, should you focus on one platform or should you have a voice on all? I know Instagram is kind of like my bread and butter. So I focus a lot on Instagram. And if I got time, I'll do other um, social media platforms. And that's also why I said having a digital community is so important. Because when I write on my newsletter, I'm not thinking about likes. I'm not thinking about comments. I'm not thinking about an algorithm because it doesn't exist. That algorithm stuff, it only exists on social media, and I think social media has made us forget that there's a whole nother side of the internet that you can tap into. Like, the internet is not social media. The internet is the internet, and social media is social media. 
And I also want you to know that your audience is gonna go wherever you're at, wherever you tell them to go, no matter how quickly it's evolving. Think about brands that you're loyal to. It doesn't matter if there's another brand that launches that's exactly similar to them. You're locked in because you have a connection to that brand. Look at yourself as a brand and know that your audience will follow you wherever you wanna go. All right, thank you guys so much. My Instagram is Donye Taylor. You guys can find me online at Donye Taylor. My Creative Anxiety ebook is actually 50% off right now. If you guys want to get it, you can get it at DonyeTaylor.com. It was so nice talking to you guys. I hope I inspired you to go home, create a digital community, and think about how you can unlock level two. Thank you.